Thieves are looking for easy targets, so one of our big self-defense lessons is don't be an easy target. Hi everybody, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from Brazil. Magtech has maintained their high quality during the ammo panic and ramped production to the max. Their ammo is the only ammo I run on the range because of its performance and reliability. I recommend Magtech wholeheartedly. Our defender is actually sitting on a motorcycle that is behind the pillar that's in the middle of the screen. And watch the guys in the moto are going to show up and the dude on the back of the moto has a gun and he is going to point it at him and announce a robbery while the guy on the moto has a gun as well. So he's going to get after these guys and the driver takes a fatal hit right there. And uh, the passenger is running off. I, I think yeeted his gun off into the wild blue yonder because you can see he's got empty hands here. Um, and now he bonks into that first one. And now our defender is going to come after him and be like, yo, man, you need to get on the ground because you just pointed a gun at me. And now watch what happens here. Eventually, he's going to run out of blood volume and, and headbutt that car and then lay down and take the asphalt temperature challenge. And that's where this one ends. Got him. If you're a firearms instructor and you want to get better at your craft, consider putting in an application to the Active Self Protection Instructor Certification. We're starting Cohort 4 later this year. Cohort 3 is completely full, but you can put in an application at the link in the description if you think you're up to the challenge. So first thing here, I think it is fantastic that this officer had his firearm on him. I can't tell you enough, friends. Your gun that is sitting in the safe at home will never save you and never protect you. So keep your firearm on your person if at all possible. I know in many places that's not allowed to people, but if at all possible, keep your firearm on your person because you do not get advance notice of needing it like this guy didn't. So not only that, he's paying attention because he's in a transitional space. So when you're in those transitional spaces, pay attention where you can get attacked with an element of surprise. They can get away quickly and take valuables like your motorcycle, your wallet, and your phone. So now notice that they come in hot and this is our good guy's decision to draw. So the bad guy actually has already shown him a gun and then he's getting you know, off the bike. So if you rock it fast now, you can get a gun out and in the fight. We would normally say if a guy's uh, got the drop on you, so he's got a gun pointed at you and he's got his eyes on you that you don't draw a gun. However, in this case, you notice him getting off the bike means he's not pointing a gun at him and there's an opportunity here, but only if you're fast. This requires a one second draw to first shot. That's all he has is exactly one second here from the time that he went, or, or it's from the time that his beep happens until the time the shot breaks. So he started moving a quarter second after that and then three quarters of a second after he started moving, the actual shot breaks. So one second total time. If you don't have a one second draw to first shot, you've got a guy you can see who's got a gun out and pointed at you you and now you've got a real gunfight but because he has a rocket fast draw to first shot he is able to get the first shot on the other guy and the first one to put an anatomically significant hit in the other guy almost always wins and that's what happens here i want you to notice as soon as the bullets start flying the bad guy didn't dive in on him distances open up in a hurry so you can see here real fast the shooting problem goes from a very close three foot problem to a 7 10 15 yard problem in a hurry and that requires high level of marksmanship skills which means put two hands on the gun. Our, our defender here still doesn't have two hands on the gun, even though he has the opportunity to do that. I get it. You get the gun out quickly and you got to, you know, say, no, man, I'm, I'm going to have to get after this and just give this guy some shots with one hand. But as soon as you can get two hands on the gun, because those shot distances open up and you need to have the ability to do that. Now, Next thing I think that our defender did really well is that you notice he checks in on the bad guy who went down. So we talk about the boarding house rules. Everyone gets firsts before anyone gets seconds. That's servings, not bullets. Uh, but recognize that once you give a serving to guy number one, you go off to guy number two, you give him a serving. Eventually, you got to come back and check your work on guy number one. And that's part of our follow-up strategy, right? So we talk about tap ifs. You got to see threat down, then look for accomplices, then check your partners, look for injuries follow-up actions, check your firearm, and then uh, seek some help from there. First aid uh, is the second F. Sorry, I missed that one. So now he's going to go chase that guy instead. And now what are you going to do here? I think this is a mission issue, right? So as a private citizen, if you're a private citizen in this, don't chase this guy down, let him go. However, this police officer, that's the police's mission is to apprehend criminals. And therefore that training as a police officer kicks in and he says, aha, I got to go apprehend this guy. So I got to chase him. I think an off duty cop, you don't have that responsibility either. And so you can get the heck away, call the on duty cops and let them come and find the guy. 
but whatever, I get it. So it's a mission thing for private citizens. Don't do this. Just get the heck away from the guy. Final thing we want to talk about here is look at how long this guy is up and a, a potentially a threat. Now he's thrown his gun away, so he's not a, a deadly threat because he doesn't have a firearm anymore. But I want you to recognize that mortally wounded, he is still on his feet with blood volume, with decision-making capability, and potentially a deadly threat for another 15 or 20 seconds. So that when we talk about, hey, make sure that you, you shoot until the threat is over. The officer did a good job of that, but recognize that the human body is remarkably resilient and a bad guy can take an awful lot of shooting to stop that threat. But great job by this off-duty officer. He had his firearm on him, had a rocket fast draw to first shot, got them both and covered his asp.